أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وأهل بيته أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان والشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and elders and dear young brothers who are listening to us, mashallah. I'm very privileged to be here. I'm very honored to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me, uh, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. It is an honor to be here with, with you, brothers. And we have brought uh, many salams from uh, Wolfstone Masjid to you all. Brothers, the ayah that we have recited, Allah said that he created uh, insan and jinn nothing but to uh, worship him so ibn abbas radiallahu an in his tafsir he says that at the end li ya'budun there is also a meaning of li ya'rifun li ya'rifun so allah created us to uh, worship him but also to know him to arafa to get to know him to attempt to know him subhanallah but how can we know him uh, in uh, in the famous tafsir of imam uh, badi'u zaman said nursi in, in in that tafsir he says that in rasail uh, nur he says that there are four universal mu'arrif mu'arrif uh, that which let us know that me, that which makes us know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his asma, his sifat and his existence, subhanallah. So when we look about those, uh, when we look at those uh, universal uh, kulli mu'arrif, we see that the first one is kitab uh, kabiri kainat. The first one is the, uh, the book of universe, the great book of universe. Just like every book has a writer, Every design has a designer. Every letter has a writer. This book of universe has a writer as well. He is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we look at that, even if someone does not get any message from someone else, he hasn't heard about any uh, divine revelation from any source, any ulama, Allah has created this universe and given us aql and mind and uh, so that we can understand. If someone looks at, if someone in the right mind look at the universe, subhanAllah, they can come to conclusion that there must be a creator. SubhanAllah, that's number one. So, um, the second kulli mu'arrif, uh, that describer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, Quran, Quran Azim Shan. So, the wise Quran. The Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah we'll uh, uh, explain a little bit more on, on this one. But let me briefly give other two uh, mu'arif, uh, universal mu'arif. The, the, the third one is Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul akram wa Nabi muhtaram khatamul anbiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he is the one, he is uh, the walking Quran, his, his akhlaq is Quran. So we know, uh, we learn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his mouth and from his actions and even from his uh, silence, subhanAllah. At the time of his act, at the time of his words and even his silence is, is, is a way of his showing the truth, alhamdulillah. So, and the last one is wijdan, wijdan. Allah has given us qalb and in our nafs we have wijdan we can say a spiritual compass, spiritual gauge. We can uh, look at this. Brothers, when you pray, when you pray, how do you, how do you feel? When you do something nice, when you help your mother or father, 
When you help the poor, when you give zakah, when, when we do something nice, how do we feel? We feel Alhamdulillah. So Allah has given, Allah has given uh, the, the mu'ajjal mukafat, so the, the sudden uh, reward in good actions. Subhanallah. In good actions, we feel like, imagine that you have a gauge in your heart. When you do something good, that gauge shows happiness, tranquility, peace. Harmony, alhamdulillah, that sakana, it, we feel it in our heart and alhamdulillah we say that, okay, that's something good. That which then, in the meantime, shows us that if we have uh, a sort of not so good environment, if we are exposed to sins, if we are having nasty friends or not good friends, and if they are dealing with not good you know, things, what happens is our heart gets gloomy, subhanAllah. If we are exposed to sins, negative things, if we are not doing the things that we are supposed to do, what happens? Our gauge, goodness gauge, showing evil and gloom, subhanAllah. In our heart, we feel that stress, unrest. This is not the thing that I should do. So that which then has also a function of showing us the truth. So ulama says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the revelation at least, at least once in a lifetime to every single human being on their heart, on their wijdan, so that they can find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. So no one is spared from this opportunity. But majority of us have, alhamdulillah, opportunity to listen to the Quran, learn Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa message and can observe the universe and come to the conclusion that there should be a creator, a khaliq, a sani, uh, you know, a, a rabb of uh, everything. Alhamdulillah. So today's uh, topic that we should uh, we should come to conclusion that, uh, okay, we have aql, we have mind, we have vijdan, we have other opportunities, but how about the Quran? Allah send us the Quran. This topic uh, of, you know, miracles of the Quran is actually beyond my capacity. So it is like uh, volumes of books have been written on that. One of them is uh, Mu'ajizat al-Qur'aniya, a risala, a specific book on Mu'ajizat of the Quran. And uh, this fakir have been uh, involved in the translation of that book as well. So inshallah ta'ala, I'll be uh, just sharing some of those pearls of wisdom from, from those uh, books that we have been able to, uh, by the will of Allah, uh, translate it, alhamdulillah. So, uh, there are very many miracles of the Qur'an. Uh, the, the first one is being uh, the linguistic miracles. Linguistic miracles, when we say linguistic miracles, uh, there are other uh, miracles as well, but we can, inshallah, at least seven or six of them, try to just briefly give in this uh, very specific uh, time. The first one is i'jaz, i'jaz, something that which makes us ajiz, ajiz, incapacitated, unable to understand, grasp the thing. That, how can it happen? Subhanallah. The Quran, when it was revealed, it just made people ajiz. They were shocked. This doesn't look like any other word. This doesn't look like, this doesn't sound like, subhanallah. They were shocked. That shock that's making them ajiz. And as we know, another miracle is uh, tahaddi. Tahaddi is the eternal challenge. As uh, mashallah Shaykh uh, stated, Allah challenged kufar, those non believers, those deniers. If you say that, if you claim that, that this word is not Allah's word, okay, this is, you know, maidan. This is the challenge. Try to make something like that. I try to make a book, produce a book like that. But brothers, we should understand that the, the book was not Allah, it was not Prophet Sallallahu word. But the kuffar, they, they gave that you know, thing. Uh, so, but Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was ummi, he was unlettered. So the challenge starts from this point. Try to write a book with the hands of an ummi person. An ummi person. How could that happen? Subhanallah. So an ummi person should write a book and it should beat uh, the, the ma'ani, the, the miracles of the Quran. Could they do that? No. If they can't do that, 
try to get someone who knows how to read and write. And try to make it that way. They couldn't do that. Subhanallah. So if you can't do it only one scholar or one alim of your type, or those, you know, these disbelievers, try to just gather all your scholars or experts on literature and poets and everything. Try to write one. They couldn't write. So uh, the challenge goes on. Like if you can't do it in your own region, get all your disbelievers together. Try to write one Quran, something like Quran. They couldn't write it. If you can't do the entire Quran, okay, now the challenge dropping down. Okay, try to write at least one big chapter, which you can't. If you can't write the big chapter, try to write a smaller surah, a smaller chapter, which you can't. And they haven't been able to do so. If you can't do that, if you can't challenge the Quran by word academically, intellectually, then, uh, you know, fight with Muslims with your swords. And this was what they could do because they were just incapacitated. They were unable to challenge the Quran. Subhanallah. Brothers, can you imagine? The Quran has been on earth for 1400 years. Alhamdulillah. Imagine that, why, why would kuffar, why did the disbelievers, why do those enemies of Islam would attack Muslims? Like we know in, in India, in, in Bangladesh, in, uh, in Palestine, in other places, uh, Muslims are being oppressed because of the, the belief. Okay, there's an easy solution. If you want to finish Muslims, finish the Quran, that's it. You don't have to use your weapons, you don't have to use all your money, time and everything. SubhanAllah, just finish off the Quran. Intellectually, you know, Western world, they like intellectuality, like academic word and all those, uh, you know, posh words and everything. Okay, come on, use your, use your intellect. Try to uh, finish the Quran by your intellect. Brothers, can they do that? Can they do that? Can they do that? SubhanAllah, they haven't been able to do so for 1400 years. And especially, as you know, in from uh, 1600s, many Orientalists, many of them, they went to Muslim world, in Ottoman, you know, to, to Palestine, to uh, Arabia, to Pakistan, to India, to learn Oriental languages, to learn the Quranic, you know, truths, to learn the Hadith, to learn the East. Subhanallah, they were experts, and in, in, in those regions, from those academic, you know, uh, Jamia from academic world, there were people who knows the Quran by heart. And recently I talked to a friend uh, who lived in Syria. He said in Syria, as Christian churches, some of them, in order to teach the, uh, the Arabic eloquent, so high level of Arabic, they would teach Quran to their Christian children. SubhanAllah. Because this is the, the, you know, the word, the peak of Arabic language. So even if they know everything about it, they can't challenge because it is impossible. So this is called inimitability. Unable to, impossible to copy the Quran. SubhanAllah. So this is number one. So they, they are ages of uh, producing something like of it. So it is impossible. So another uh, mu'ajiza of the Quran is that, just briefly, it is ijaz. The first one was i'jaz. Making ajiz, I'm ajiz, I can't do that. The second one is ijaz, more meaning with less words. Subhanallah, Quran says loads. If you look at mufassirin, hundreds of thousands of uh, tafsir are on earth. Subhanallah, mufassirin, when they look at it, subhanallah, there's another meaning, there's another meaning, there's another meaning. So it is full of meaning, subhanallah, an ocean of knowledge an ocean of meaning but very tiny little sentence it has an ocean in that subhanallah so i'jaz the first one is i'jaz making ajiz with ijaz what is that less words massive meaning allahu akbar so the quran is word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how could a man would produce something like that impossible and another thing is balagha Balagha, that the eloquence, the art of speaking in an in a most appropriate way, in a way that uh, the the um, description of balagha uh, it is stated that muktazayi hal mutabik hareket, muktazayi hal 
the requirement of the situation. So if you want to say something, you need to say in the most appropriate way uh, to the requirement of the situation. It shouldn't be over the top. It shouldn't be less. It should be just exact amount. So if you want to say something, while you're saying, you should say, you should uh, consider your addressees, your people that you're speaking to, subhanAllah. And if you say something, you should say in the um, measured way. It shouldn't be uh, very boring. It shouldn't be very, too much attractive. So that it, SubhanAllah, saying in the right time, because there are things you can say, give a long you know, khutbah, but if it is not Juma time, it doesn't mean anything. You can give you know, lecture on uh, physics or whatever, but if it is just in the middle of uh, the street, it doesn't mean anything, subhanAllah. Balagha is that which an address that is done in the right time, in the right place, in the most appropriate manner to the right people. Allahu Akbar. Let me look at the Quran. It gives that exact you know, definition. The dictionary definition of is balagha on the top level in the Quran. So do you think Quran could be imitated? Brothers? Asha, it is impossible. Far be it from me. Another uh, thing, just to uh, briefly, fasaha. It is pure. Purity and clarity of the Quran. Allahu Akbar. It is so pure. It is so clear. When we first read, when we, when we listen to it, when we read, we see that it is not like, you know, when, when you read a human word, there's shakaka. It just stops somewhere. You, you realize that it shouldn't be that. It should, you, you spot some things. But in the Quran, it just flows. That clarity and purity. And jazala together with it. Harmonious fluency. And shababa. It is youth. It is fresh. When we read it, like 40 times a day, we read Surah Fatiha at least 40 times. Every time we read, we are not tired of it, subhanAllah. We are not tired of it. When we read it, we still feel that freshness of the Qur'an. Every time Allah gives power, Allah gives freshness to the word of Allah. It is a miracle. So, if you listen to one of the brothers or another you know, person, if you listen to your child, if they speak always the same thing, you get bored. Okay, hold on, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Say something different. But when it is the Qur'an, we read, subhanAllah, and we get boosted, our iman get boosted. We feel that energy, we feel that spirituality every time we read. Oh, brothers, we can you know, enumerate, we can increase other ones, but just briefly giving you another one, ikhbarat ghaibiya. Ikhbarat, giving news of the unseen. It could be in three different levels. One is from the past, one could be from the future, one from this time. So when we look at the, the Quran, we see that, subhanAllah, uh, the news about Romans and Persians. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the middle of nowhere in, in the Arabian Peninsula just, you know, uh, engulfed with, with, with the you know, deserts and everything. No knowledge, nothing. But he gives news about Persians and Romans who will win, subhanAllah. So is it Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's word? No, it is Allah's word. I went to school. One time a child asked me, Hamza, you said that there's only one God and Jesus is not Allah's, you know, is not God's son. But he was given miracles. So he healed people. Uh, so he was, uh, he did this and he did that. So he, I think Jesus should be son of God. I said, that's a very good question. But you know, Moses, peace be upon him, and Musa alayhi salam had miracles as well. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was thrown into the sea, uh, thrown into the fire and he, he didn't get burned. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave uh, every single prophet a type of miracle to their time and our time is uh, balagha and fasaha that are pure speech subhanallah so at that time I said to them okay if you say that the miracle miracle is their own working just look at the universe wood wood trees look at the trees when we look at old you know a tree subhanallah but out of it comes very succulent, beautiful fruits. So that wood is not able to create, uh, you know, an apple. 
So it shows that actually, and I, there, there was a curtain. I just went behi be behind the curtain. I said, okay, if I give you uh, a chocolate cake right now, would you say thank you to the curtain or would you think that there's someone behind the curtain? They said, oh, obviously, the, you know, you are behind the curtain, so you're giving us the chocolate cake. Okay, so in dunya, in this, you know, physical world, asbab, you know, uh, causes are veils, are parda, are curtains for us. Behind it, there is hikmah and wisdom and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at the curtains, when we look at clouds, okay, from the clouds comes what? Rain. But do we say thank you, rain, for <laughs> sending us? No, actually, rain doesn't know, the cloud doesn't know anything about it, but Allah is the one created in the hands of clouds. So Allah created things in the hands of uh, the miracles, in the hands of whom? The prophets. So prophets are just the ones in them uh, manifested, the miracles are manifested. Subhanallah. So similarly, the Quran is manifested in the hands of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is not his word. And if we say so, it would be very uh, weird, you know, claim, because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi didn't know how to write, and he didn't have that uh, environment. He wouldn't know about Egypt. 1960s or 1970s, Egyptologists, they realized there were certain things that the hieroglyphs, you know, they, they have recently uh, realized how to read it in 1960s or maybe earlier, I'm not sure, but very uh, 1,000 years later than the Quran, definitely. So they realized the things said about the Egyptians and Fir'aun are written in, <laughs> subhanAllah, and they recently realized, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't know about it in, in those times. And past, you know, examples about, uh, when we look at, you know, Bibles, we, we don't see uh, very many details about uh, uh, Maryam, Sayyidah Maryam, but the Quran has a big chapter on that. So we can enumerate. And about the future, we said uh, Romans and you know, Persians and everything. And about today's time is scientific miracles. So like uh, embryology, about you know, uh, astronomy, about geology. The, the things that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wouldn't know by his, himself. But it was uh, given in the Quran. When we, the scientists look at it, subhanAllah, they're amazed. How could they happen? 1400 years ago, uh, in, in a village uh, in the middle of desert, but giving uh, science about, given knowledge about the orbits, given, uh, you know, uh, knowledge about babies, you know, uh, creation and everything, subhanAllah. So these are the uh, ghaibi, you know, uh, news that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given uh, with, with the Quran. So it is another miracle. But just to uh, remind myself and uh, our brothers, that sometimes some brothers, while they're giving da'wah, while they're t talking about Islam, sometimes they are only giving the miracles or scientific miracles, as if science is the only way of showing the pr proof. No. Science is actually something that is improving day by day. So in 1950s, maybe they didn't have this knowledge. So if, the, if there is a sentence in the Quran and there is a scientific proof, if they match together, Okay, then uh, this is proving uh, the truth of Quran, veracity of haq of the Quran. No, this is just something that is currently in line with the Quran. It could change. Science can change, and it is changing. So we shouldn't base the entire argument on science, my dear brothers. So the, the Quran is itself is so powerful. It's, it's mu'jiza, it's ijaz, it's i'jaz, it's fasaha, it's balagha, it's shababa, it's jazala. Everything is in there. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is the biggest, you know, his, his sunnah, living Qur'an is there. So we don't need uh, scientific proofs on that. If there is, it's just icing on the cake. That's fine. We don't deny that. And it is there, alhamdulillah. It is wisdom of Allah. The, you know, kitab kainat. Allah is the creator of the universe. And the, the word is Allah. You know, kalam Allah is, is the Qur'an. So definitely there should be a parallel, a harmonious, you know, order between each other. But we shouldn't base the entire thing on uh, very lacking, you know, uh, human uh, mistake, full of human mistakes, science. It is improving, and inshallah it will reach uh, the Quran's high level, but uh, it, it may not. There is a possibility that it will not be able to do so. Anyway, so these are the miracles of the Quran, and the final one is uh, tawafuq, tawafuqat in the Quran, in the writing of the Quran. 
Subhanallah, brothers, two, uh, 2,408 lafzatullah, names of Allah in the Quran. They are all harmoniously congruent. They are all aligned in the Quran. Symmetrically, under one under each other, or at the back page. So there are uh, copies of the Quran written in the uh, last century that those miracles are shown. Allah's name is never spared alone, subhanAllah. It is always incongruent. Inshallah, next time maybe if, if we have time, we can do a full uh, presentation on tawafuqat of the Quran, which is uh, a miracle for modern people who, shows, who, sh who says that if I don't see, I don't believe. This is what they say. And Allah shows it in the Quran that this is the word of There is no tasaduf. What is tasaduf? Do you, do you have that word? In... Yeah, tasaduf. Just coincidence. There is no coincidence. But tawafuq. Synchronicity. So an intended, uh, meaningful getting together. So Allah creates everything with tawafuq. So everything is intended. So there, there is no chance, no uh, accident, no coincidence. My dear brothers, we can talk uh, till iftar time. Uh, but uh, my apologies to finish off here. So as we understand, so those disbelievers, while they're attacking the Quran, subhanAllah, what they, what they can do only to just, you know, empty talk. But when we look, when we deep, go deep down into the Quran, we see that subhanAllah, this is the word of Allah. And we believe in the word of Allah. And we believe in every single sentence in that because it has been preserved. It is not like the Bible, uh, the first full copy of the Bible was written after 14, four centuries later, centuries later, Jesus alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, subhanallah, four, full copy of Bible was written. So the original was Aramaic, then later on Hebrew, then translated into uh, Latin and Greek and English and all that. And Catholic has uh, 39 chapter and, you know, Protestants have 35 and all that, subhanallah. But the Quran entire universe and you go you go to the Jap you go to japan you have the same quran you go to australia you have the same you go to turkey you go to pakistan same quran alhamdulillah and it's been preserved it's been memorized and there are millions of you know hufas around the world now alhamdulillah we are we are blessed to be sitting with the in the majlis of our hufas brothers may allah bless them mashallah they are leading the taraweeh so we are experiencing that spiritual power of the Quran. So we are blessed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us uh, in the straight path, uh, keep us our relation with the, with the Quran, and let us uh, know the meanings of the Quran and uh, make us apply uh, the principles and rules in, in the Quran. Ala inna ahsan al kalam wa ablaga al nizam. Kalamullah il malik il aziz il alam. كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في الكلام وإذا قرأ القرآن فاستمعوا له وانصتوا لعلكم ترحمون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته